Good morning and welcome to Gloria Day on this, the 15th Sunday in Pentecost. Um, hopefully you are uh, staying safe and probably mostly indoors as uh, the air quality is not so good, at least as we are recording this this day. Um, but welcome. We're glad you're here to worship uh, with us together, even online. A couple of things that are happening. It is First Fruits uh, Week, the first of week of the month, where we are gathering food to go to the food bank. We've been doing that all week. We got quite a bit that has been gathered, but if you would still like to bring some food, uh, it will be delivered on Monday. So please uh, bring those and there's a drop off box outside the front doors of Glory Day. So even if no one is here, you can drop that off and we will get that food to needed families in our community. Uh, it, uh, it is also uh, program rally Sunday. Uh, many of the programs that are happening online, so I encourage you to find your e-news and or look on the website to find out some of the many different offerings, Sunday school, adult education that will be coming up, uh, the many different things that are happening this time of year for uh, programming. There's a lot going on. Just, uh, again, uh, keep reading those e-newses. Uh, contact the church office if you have any questions, and uh, we continue... Um, with God's presence in our lives as this community of faith together. We begin in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Lord God, most merciful judge, you are the unlimited fountain of mercy and forgiveness. Melt our hearts of stone into hearts that love you and extend that love to all in our world. We seek to delight in doing your will and we solicit your presence in our worship this day, all through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Oh, good morning, everyone. Hey, it's my favorite time of the morning. It's children's time. And you know, I was just reading the Bible lesson for today, and it's all about forgiveness. So I was thinking about uh, what it means to be forgiven and that wonderful gift that God gives us of forgiveness. And so I was um, looking at, uh, you know, this basket as being kind of like my life. And, and I have a few candies, a few, uh, what do they call these suckers, these dum-dums. And sometimes I do dumb things in life and I need forgiveness. And so the wonderful thing is, is that God... and you all know this is my other favorite kind of candy, right? Smarties. God forgives us. And so um, even when I do things that I shouldn't do, like I don't pick up my toys or I don't do the dishes or I don't obey my parents or whatever it might be, and I ask for forgiveness, God is always there to forgive. Not just once or twice or or seven times, but the Bible says God continues to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive. God forgives us always. And just when we think God can't forgive us anymore, God forgives us even more. Wow. Forgiveness. Let's see. Forgiveness indeed is Sweet. Well, the Bible also tells us that when there's other people, say this basket is someone else, and other people need our forgiveness for whatever reason, we should also think about forgiving them. And so we must remember that God first forgives us many times over to overflowing like this basket. And so we have forgiveness that we too can give to others. And sometimes it's not easy, but that's the job that God calls us to do, to be forgiving, to, to, to love our neighbors, to forgive our neighbors, and uh, that's how we walk in the footsteps of God. But we should always remember that God forgives us abundantly no matter what. In fact, God's forgiveness is huge. So always remember that, boys and girls, that uh, God loves you. God forgives you even when you do wrong. And in turn, we can forgive one another. Let's pray. Gracious, loving God, thank you for your forgiveness. Help us always to love and forgive one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for helping me out this morning, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody. Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave us instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept and fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as God is doing today. 
So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Here ends the reading. A reading from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives you all your iniquity, heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. God made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God will not always accuse, nor will he keep anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love to all who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a parent has compassion for children, so the Lord has compassion for all those who fear him. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, not just seven times, but rather as many as 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, they brought to him a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Because the servant did not have enough to pay it back, the master ordered that he should be sold along with his wife and children and everything he had, and that the proceeds should be used as a payment. But the servant fell down, kneeled before him, and said, Please be patient with me, I will pay you back. The master had compassion on his servant and released him and forgave the whole loan. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred coins. He grabbed him around the throat and said, pay me back what you owe me. Then his fellow servant fell down and begged him, be patient with me and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he threw him into prison until he paid back his debt. When his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply offended. They came and told their master all that happened. His master called the first servant and said, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you appealed to me. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? His master was furious and handed him over to the guard responsible for punishing prisoners until he had paid the whole debt. My heavenly father will also do the same to you if you don't forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Word of God, word of life. Well, this morning, let's spend a little time swimming in the complexity of forgiveness, treading water, floundering, floating. Let's ponder its power. Let's give a nod, no, maybe a vigorous head shaking, yes, to how difficult forgiveness can be. Why? Why are we going to talk about this? Because forgiveness is the subject of all of our scriptures for this morning, assigned through our lectionary readings. Joseph and his brothers who, who beg Joseph for forgiveness after his father dies, after their father dies, certain that he would want vengeance, 
But Joseph has a different perspective, doesn't he? One that wasn't of vengeance, but of forgiveness. Again, in our gospel, Peter asks Jesus about sin. So Jesus, what is the limit on sin? Is it seven times? Let's do the math problem. There must be a formula for this, a right number. And Jesus, always provocative, expands. Expands Peter's vision and, and tells a version of forgiveness through this parable. And the psalmist in Psalm 103, that beautiful psalm, ever expressive, extolling the heart of God. God who forgives you all your sins, who heals your ill, redeems your life from the pit. So forgiveness is a part of all our scriptures, and forgiveness is also foundational to our worship. It is the very core. In just a few moments, we will share in the cup of salvation, which has been given for the forgiveness of all sins, the new covenant found in the blood of Christ. We will also say together those words we do every week, the words of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin or trespass against us. Turns out forgiveness is at the very heart of Christianity. And it is so hard and so complex. So we are going to swim, flounder, and float in forgiveness today. Our gospel from Matthew is one look at forgiveness or the lack thereof it on the part of that first servant. It seems that he had a hard time connecting the dots. His experience, his interactions and his relationships, he was forgiven, but he was not forgiving. What's the message of this parable? It seems pretty clear. God wants us to forgive just as we have been in need of forgiveness and also are always forgiven by God. So we should forgive as we've been forgiven. And yet, how is that dot connecting going in your own life? How's it going in my life, in our country? You, you know what I'm alluding to. I have heard extreme words on both sides of the partisan divide. How could anyone vote for you fill in the blank? Oof, our great divide. We are swimming, make no mistake, floundering in a sea of finger pointing and blaming. What if we turned the tide to calmer waters, to Christ waters, with understanding and healing rather than rage and anger? I think we're invited to connect the dots of our own words and actions. We are forgiven. I loved Pastor Doug's children's time, overflowing forgiveness. And we, too, can connect the dots of, of how forgiveness operates in our lives. So on to our First Testament reading from Je Genesis. Joseph and his amazing Technicolor dream coat. Joseph is remembering or reflecting on his life differently than his brother's seem to. And this is so unexpected. It's unusual. It's a surprise to them. Long ago, they had bad intentions. But according to Joseph, it turned out for good. Really? That is an amazing perspective. God had a bigger plan, he says, and Joseph forgives them. And the release of tension and turmoil is palpable in the story. 
Reconciliation happens through the asking and the action of forgiveness. There is some deep digging for that kind of thing to happen. Deep soul searching and prayer. Corrie Ten Boom was a Dutch Christian woman who was imprisoned in the Ravensbrück con concentration camp. She had been hiding Jewish people in her home and she lost her beloved sister at the camp. And after the war, she traveled around Europe preaching the Christian gospel of forgiveness and of reconciliation. And in one of her writings, she talks about an encounter with a former guard from Ravensbrook who had showed up to one of her speaking engagements it was at a German church in 1947, and he came up to her after the talk and, and told her, approached her, told her that he had become a Christian. And he knew about forgiveness and that God had forgiven him, but he wanted to ask for her forgiveness specifically. And he held out his hand says she felt this cold, hard anger. And to quote her, she says, I stood still there with a coldness clutching my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion, Corey Ten Boom writes. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and it can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling, O oh Lord. And so she writes, woodenly, mechanically, she put her hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did it, she writes, an incredible thing took place. Place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands. And then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. I forgive you, brother, with all my heart, she said. For a long moment, we grasped each other's hands and the former guard and the former prisoner. I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. That's the end of her words. Now back to my words. It is complex forgiveness. And we're treading in dangerous waters here. The story of Joseph, of Corey Ten Boom, of so many unnamed people hurt by other people. It can seem to be a loophole or permission given to abusers or bad, harmful behavior that it can be excused. That's not something we want to condone or want to do, should we? Forgiveness is hard, but it doesn't happen in isolation. It comes with accountability and consequence. And forgiveness is not always a one and done, a write-off, but it is a process. Someone described sin as a moment. Sin inflicts moments, scars, wounds, damage. But forgiveness is a movement. Forgiveness is a way of life and being. It is the way of Christ. It's a, it's a culture to create. It's tempting to sum this up and hear God say, you should forgive. 
but as a plaque on the wall of a colleague reads, God doesn't exist to should on God's people. No, God says, you have been forgiven. You are forgiven. You will always be forgiven and freed. Always. Always forgiven by the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Psalm 103 sings a description of God's nature of forgiveness so beautifully. Listen to those words again. God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God will not always accuse or keep anger forever. As far as the east is from the west, So far, God removes our transgressions from us. And to that, we can say, bless the Lord, O my soul. O my soul, bless God and God's holy and precious name. In Jesus' name, know that you are forgiven and freed. In the name of Christ. Amen. God's work, our hands. Strengthen our faith through study and prayer. Just as Jesus fed the multitudes, bless our first fruits initiative so that all are nourished, especially during this time of pandemic scarcity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, the heights of the heavens and the depths of our universe show us the greatness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your beautiful creation where our selfishness has brought destruction and our carelessness has fueled the ravages of weather, wildfire, and weather disasters. We look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Inject kindness into our bitter grudges. Discipline us to forgive, even when our humanity cries out for revenge. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. 
Make our congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Inspire our leaders with humility, patience, and godly wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Merciful God, bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide justice for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Guide and guard refugees in fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Also, we lift up all on our prayer list and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, guide our educational systems and decision makers. We are so grateful within our own congregation for the ministry of our preschool. We offer thanksgiving for the gift of an exceptional garage sale to bolster our tuition assistance program. With great delight, we now dispatch our kids' backpacks to help children throughout our world. Be very present, O oh God, as the school year now opens with great uncertainty and anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, with grateful hearts we entrust to your mercy, through our Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to share that peace with those around you in your uh, circle, or say a prayer for peace, or even write a, a letter of peace to a friend that is not close by. Uh, but know that God's peace goes with you these days and always. We continue uh, with our offering and offertory music, but first we have a um, temple talk from Pat Greger, who is talking about what Gloria Day means to her and uh, in regards to our special appeal. And thank you so much. We're two thirds of the way. Uh, to our special appeal and uh, we are just so humbled and grateful for your generosity and uh, just know that this place means a lot to to many 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 different people uh, not only now but in the in the time to come in the future as well and you are playing a part of supporting this community of faith uh, this facility and the body of Christ Hi everybody, I'm Pat Greger, answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Pat Greger, my dear friend. We wanted to ask you your perspective on legacy and community as it connects to building a firm foundation. So, you are someone who I know lives with a spirit of gratitude. Will you say more about that? Uh, it's a blessing and it doesn't come to every person uh, and I you know I don't see myself as particularly seeking that out uh, again I have to say I was given many people around me to raise me with a grateful heart, a love for others. Not that I didn't fight with my brothers once in a while or anything else uh, normal, but I have felt even as a, you know, Sunday school kid, I felt more fortunate than the kids that lived a quarter mile away from me. And I would invite them to come to Sunday school with me. I eventually did get one of them to come with me. But at a very young age, I, I realized that not everybody has the gift of knowing a savior and what that should mean. Because, you know, when you're little, who cares about a savior? What are you going to be saved from? You know, 
And again, I have to say I had two teachers for parents, and they had a way of getting us to unload our questions and giving us intelligent answers. And I, I feel ultra blessed in, in the lessons I learned at an early age and that have stayed with me. So. Well, I know that you have filled my cup when I cross paths with you or when we <laughs> connect. And that is a legacy of love yeah. and blessing that you give not only to me, but to your family and to so many people. Oh, well, thank you for saying that. But Thank you for being a part of this video. Any things you want to say to that virtual world out there, Pat? <laughs> Look for the good. It's there. And vice versa. The not so good is there too. But you don't have to go it alone. That's community. Yeah. So. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs>
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Everyone is welcome to the celebration feast. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, truth, life, and love, both this day, now, and forever. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Jesus. So guided by your Holy Spirit, lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard. By your grace and strength, help us to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guide us by the example of Jesus the Christ, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord continue to bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine up on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, the Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who sustains and gives us life. Amen.
Go in and peace, peace to love and serve, and serve the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.